Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Rec Tech on YouTube. I'm your host, Chris Russell. So Findem, the uh, talent sourcing and CRM solution, has introduced new generative AI capabilities integrated throughout its platform. Built on a foundation of three-dimensional people and company data that is time-ordered, the company says their talent data cloud is uniquely positioned to provide chat GPT-enabled insights across the talent lifecycle that can't be found any other way. Here to demo some of those new features is their CEO, Hari Kalam. Hari, uh, welcome to the show, and it's great to have you. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Before we get to the demo, explain to me why this is unique in the marketplace. Why, why are you so excited about this? So, uh, absolutely. So, uh, uh, the brief history of uh, Findem, Chris, we started out uh, by challenging the conventional notion of, uh, of, of, a, of a resume inside the TA, right? Because our firm belief is uh, the automation is uh, only as good as the underlying data. And one of our fundamental belief is uh, the core data set on which the entire TA ecosystem relies on, be it for pipelining or analytics or market intelligence, is a resume and that is the most untrustworthy, unverified and inconsistent data sets out there, right? Mm -hmm. So in the world of generative AI, uh, because we're talking about uh, uh, AI making autonomous decisions, right? It's only as good as the data, and we all know that. So the foundation of the platform, the company has been reimagining and rebuilding uh, the data set that is automatable, which actually comes in quite handy in the Gen AI world. So we solved it, the, the ground sub pay, which is the data first and then slapped in AI on top. So we are BI platforms with AI capabilities built on top, which is the first core differentiation. The second core differentiation, we have extremely responsible. One of the guiding principles with Findem is to build an enabler platform, which means uh, it is not a displacer for a uh, human activity, but enabler for a recruiter to get the right context and the right data at the right time. So what you'll essentially see as part of the demonstration is a vertically integrated generative AI across workflows where every step of the way the control is with the recruiters, not in an autonomous way. So these yeah. two essentially have been our guiding principles and they are generally different in how AI is talked about in the market. And it looks like you kind of you've embedded this sort of natural language query in there, right? So I'm reading out the press release here. Some of the examples of types of queries that can be made include things like, quote, give me a list of software engineers in the Bay Area with eight or more years of experience who are skilled at Python and have, have worked at a B2B startup. Um, or show me rehirable alumni who are a fit for this job, for example. So the the best part is when you look at many of the which I'm going to demonstrate today as part of the as part of the workflow, there is a building the search mode, which is translating a hiring intent into a search, right? What are the barriers? The barrier today is uh, if I say, find me somebody who's worked uh, in a startup, working in the Bay Area, so who's an expertise in Java, right? So uh, not everything is searchable. I can't go to LinkedIn and type startup because every company is a startup at some point of time, right? So there's right. expressivity constraint, and uh, which, which is exactly where the research time goes in with the recruiter, which find them and with the Gen AI capabilities, you are able to express it in plain, simple, natural language. It breaks down into an attribute-centric search, which relies on the 3D data and builds the omnichannel pipeline in a very automatic way. Now, every part of the life cycle we've integrated AI, I'm gonna show you four use cases today on where we've vertically integrated it to uh, extrapolate some of the work that uh, a recruiter should be doing and giving them right access at the right time. Okay, we'll go ahead and share your screen, Hari, and uh, we'll get rolling here. Let's do this and uh, uh, are you able to see my screen? Yes. So for this uh, purpose of the demo, I'm going to essentially build a simple search and uh, and I'm showing you a simple find them search platform and we'll go across uh, different applications one by one. Okay. The very first part of uh, the demonstration would be to build a search. There are many ways of building a search with find them. The conventional old school way of picking up a role and then starting to build it ground up, right? I could clone a LinkedIn profile, which is exactly uh, uh, one of the abilities to actually look at an ideal candidate and then use them as a guiding principle for the future hires. I could drop in a job description, which is the third different way. And the most recent way essentially is the AI first way, which is uh, which is something that I'm gonna essentially demonstrate here. And for the purpose of the demo, I'm gonna essentially use what we were talking about here. I'm looking for, I'm trying to, to hire, I want to uh, hire a software engineer in the Bay Area who knows Java and who has worked in a startup, right? Now mm -hmm. notice that I essentially put in my English sentence, uh, in uh, which which actually is uh, going to be an input from my intake meeting, right? And uh, the very soon, of course, it could essentially be a 
record a template of an int entire intake meeting. The goal here is you interpret the plain natural language and break it down into its component attributes. I had four or five different attributes here, right? And what you'll essentially realize here, I looked for a software engineer, it automatically picked it up in the Bay Area. It picked it up. I looked for a skill called Java. It picked it up. I'm looking for people not just in Java, but also verified code in Java because I, I care about people that actually have written uh, some verified code plus somebody that actually has worked in a startup, right? All these attributes got automatically built out. So thereby you actually have a pipeline already uh, already in place here, right? Let's yep. say uh, uh, for simplicity, I'm going to connect this first with the, with the ATS job. Let's say this is a backend engineer. This is one of my ATS jobs on the back. Uh, now what I've essentially done here is I'm creating my entire talent pipeline here. The top bar shows you all sources of candidates matching the search inside my entire talent ecosystem, right? There are 15 applicants, right? Not all of them could be a match because I have a different requirement for a backend engineer. It actually auto qualifies them. There are about uh, two hidden candidates in my 80th uh, applicant ecosystem where they are a match, which is uh, showing me all my past applicants that are a match. It's not just a, it is not just a, a, a current applicant. So because they are past applicants, you don't need to enrich them and run a match against them. Yep. They're about, it actually auto enriches that. It, there are about 6,000 candidates in my uh, CRM that I've been nurturing that are a match. It actually talks about about 3,400 potential referrals based on the pipeline. They're, they're, if they were alumni, it will show up here. If they're employees, they'll show up here. So the goal here is the entire talent ecosystem is accessible, made accessible to the recruiter with a single click, right? By just essentially describing what I essentially need. Every candidate that shows up here, will actually see an enriched profile. The brilliant part about an enriched profile with Findem is it, is it assimilates different data sets. You'll see it, it linked up different data sets because I'm looking for really a developer who's coded in Java. You'll actually see that the person wrote code in Java and the lines of code and the commits are shown as verified here. The verified code is the supremely important one. It actually also shows you people mm -hmm. in the company that may know them because they've overlapped in the past lives. They went to school together, worked together, or possibly committed the same code. I can request the introduction directly from here. Uh, of course, their entire career history shows up here, right? Including the companies that they work for. In this case, you actually will see Logan actually worked at a company that actually grew when he was, uh, uh, when he was uh, in place. The idea there is you actually are uh, looking at a, a snapshot of a career and the impact that they've had into the org when they work, both from a perspective. Yeah, you give of, you some context to like what the environment was like there. Uh, exactly right. Working there, that's interesting. Background. Yeah, very cool. This is the benefit of a three-dimensional profile, right? Now, this entire information essentially is uh, big, right? A resume is about four kilobytes in size. A final profile for Logan would be about 50 megabytes. You can actually pass through it or I can actually ask GPT to summarize it. Hey, why is this candidate a match, right? We use Gen AI here to uh, go do a real match between the candidate profile and the search and present in plain, simple English for a recruiter that they can actually use to communicate with the hiring manager on why the person is a match, right? This does the job of information. Cool. Yeah, it actually will tell you that the person actually has contribution on GitHub, right? Yeah. All the salient features essentially exposed, right? I could essentially now say, write me a simple uh, email to my hiring manager. <laughs> Pitching this candidate, keep it 100 words or less, right? I can ask pretty much anything. It's going to drop up that email for me, right? So the, again, you'll notice here, in both the cases of me building a search, I can I could have essentially tweaked in an attribute as well as here, you, the control is the recruiter. The control is not with the system. The system essentially is an enabler. Yeah. Not a displacer, right? so that's the guiding principle for, for find them. I love the use case. That's a great, uh, great uh, little... Little, yeah, so, make a little uh, item there to uh, really help sell the job. Exactly. And I think most of the EQ required is about saying the right things about the candidate because the intricate details may be overlooked. That's exactly where the AI will come in because it will essentially come ahead and uh, pull that out. So thereby the recruiters essentially appear strategic. The other part of Findum platform, which I think is supremely unique, is uh, providing the right tools for the recruiters to actually uh, strategize with the hiring manager. For example, I put in a location requirement here for a San Francisco Bay Area. Let's say I'm going to essentially expand this to the whole of the United States, right? So uh, uh, now I want to market map because the the I'm, I'm expanding the pool, but I want to look at the location strategy, right? It presents a heat map, which I think is uh, is very important in the intake meeting to look at what is the distribution of the talent pool say, across the whole country, right? So you can actually get a bird's eye view on which locations to avoid versus not, right? Even where in California, right? So uh, the goal of essentially presenting this data at the right time is supremely uh, made accessible. And so is the diversity data set. So you can actually go look at the gender distribution of talent. And if I were to look at really the women candidates and matches the search, 
what should be my location strategy, right? So uh, ultimately, there's an intent on being it being a gender diverse pipeline, but uh, gender inclusive pipeline, but which is the location, right? It actually is uh, important as a strategic tool to keep the expectations in a, in, at bay, right? Nice. The, the the third piece that we do, we have a pipeline here. I want to reach out. I don't want to reach out one by one. I can actually go and pick up and say reach out to the top 50 of those candidates. And I essentially say create a new campaign. It comes integrated with an outreach campaign. And the third part where we do the AI integration here is uh, uh, is uh, an ability to build a sequence, of course, right? I can connect my own email. I have the email come out as a hiring manager or the email come out as a, as a, as a recruiter, right? I mean, the response can come back to the recruiter. The sequences essentially can be created using AI again here. I could say, build me an email out using Jenny AI for this role. Now that I know the role, now that I know the company, it's going to automatically create the uh, a pitch. I can actually go and say, hey, make it... Uh, a little bit more friendlier in tone, right? Or essentially have it add, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Gen AI prompt, so I can actually have it uh, uh, build a sequence the way I want to. Can it generate a subject line too? Sorry? Can it generate a subject line too? It can. It will generate a subject line uh, if I essentially were to put a indicator here, I mean, um, uh, in the in the Gen AI prompt. You could do that. So uh, I, I need to essentially have it uh, uh, specified for me. Gotcha. Can you create a good subject line for this one, right? I mean, I think uh, it essentially automatically allows that to do that. The follow-up here is also automated, which means uh, I can go ahead and say, build a follow-up based on the previous one. So what this will do is essentially look at my previous email and then essentially build a, build a, build a follow-up based on that, right? I mean, I can actually keep on, uh, I can keep on doing that in a very uh, thoughtful way. Yeah. What's the recommended uh, cadence there as far as how many emails and when they should go out, Hari? So uh, depends on the role, right? Very good. Typically, what we've seen is uh, when you look at a when you look at a uh, engineering centric role, we've seen maximal response rates actually show up in the third or fourth sequence, right? And usually, when the tone essentially is of a breakup, right? So uh, the depending on the role and depending on the tone, I think it is uh, uh, having more than two sequences is generally advised. For for an exec search, we've seen. Uh, Two sequences actually work wonders, right? I mean, we've seen equal distribution. So depending on the role and the uh, and, and the company, and I think uh, uh, the engineers is the far on the right side, which is more sequences the better. Exact is on the on the limited side, but with very terse and tight message. Gotcha. So uh, you build a you build a uh, sequence. It actually is going to go automatically, and the interested candidates will automatically flow into your applicant tracking system, right? So uh, the the three parts that I demonstrated: the first part of AI was building a search, reviewing the candidates. The third part was in the campaign side. And the final part that I'll essentially show as part of the demonstration is analyzing that. Find essentially is a BI platform, as I mentioned in the beginning of the discourse. So we do essentially provide the ability to uh, build dashboards, right? I mean, like uh, it's, it's the entire BI internal external data is available to build fantastic charts, right? These are like your Tableau dashboard, where I can actually go ahead and uh, uh, put any filters, any uh, groups, any columns, right? To build uh, compelling uh, stats integrating with your internal platforms as well as external platforms, right? Now, when you look at the charts, I can actually, you'll see the integration with AI here in order to explain the graphs in a very thoughtful way, right? So in this particular case, I'm asking uh, Gen AI to explain what this number is, right? I mean, uh, and it actually talks about uh, what the, uh, uh, summarizing the content based on the data set. I can actually right. ask it very personalized content to uh, help me understand the data set in its finer grain details, right? Now, the best part with our LLM integrations, we use uh, OpenAI as well as BART on the back, as a, uh, uh, is that we vectorize the information, so thereby the information within the company stays within the firewall, and the vectorized information essentially is used with the LLM to interpret the information it's presented to it. So thereby, I think it is built in a very responsible way. Very cool. Um... That culminates the 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 flow around Gen AI. So uh, happy to uh, dig in uh, if there's any part of it that was left unclear, Chris. No, it's, uh, it looks looks fantastic, and I like how visual the graphs are and things like that. And uh, I think the uh, the way you've implemented it is pretty good. So I think recruiters out there will really like it. So uh, um, good job. Thank um, you. Yeah, I guess well as we end this out, Tari, tell them where to go to uh, learn more. Uh, findem.ai would be the right uh, website to uh, request a demo. I'm at hari at findem.ai, and I think we'll essentially share that uh, as part of the. Uh, I'm assuming as part of the uh, um, as part of the content here, right? So, uh, so uh, reach out to me or reach out to uh, or, or kind of contact us through the website. 
happy to essentially uh, dig into a specific use case that uh, uh, that the leaders are quite, uh, looking forward to solving. Definitely. Well, we see you guys at uh, HR Tech this year. We are going to be at HR Tech. We actually are going to be running a, a bunch of master classes. I'm actually looking forward to uh, uh, meeting uh, uh, white group folks. I'm assuming you're also there. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. All right. We'll see you out there, Harry. And uh, nice lot for coming by today and uh, talking to us here on Right Tech. Thank you. I appreciate it, Chris. Thank you for having us. Bye. All right, everyone. Take care.